If you've never heard of fracking before, I recommend you find out about it. The subject of this video is to look at the effects of fracking and the industrialisation of the countryside. Industrialisation is the period of social and economic change that transforms a human group from an agricultural society into an industrial one, involving the reorganisation of an economy for the purposes of manufacturing. When moving into an area, the energy companies often say they'll be good neighbours or they will minimise impact on the surrounding area and other reassuring words. But, with the potential earnings of around £100 million a year, it's not surprising they will say anything to get what they want. Let's take Third Energy as an example. They are an energy company wholly owned by Barclays Bank. They bought a company called Viking UK Gas Limited back in 2011, who for the last 20 years have been operating a small power station running from a conventional gas well in the area. Now though, since Barclays Bank have been in the mix, they want to frack the Rad Hill area of North Yorkshire to exploit the natural gas that lies in the Bowl and Shale. They have a licence from the government to search an 850 square kilometre area. Third Energy had assured the then MP for Thurston Moulton and McIntosh that they had no intention of fracking the area and was just looking at conventional petroleum operations. This is a common thing for them to say at first. Since then, they have confirmed their intentions to frack the area and have put in a planning application for the first fracking well at Kirby Mispeton. I recently read in the Moulton and Pickering Mercury that the now MP for Thursk and Moulton, Kevin Hollinrake, has had assurances from Third Energy that they will not place well pads closer than six miles apart in the area. This means they would only be able to fit around 13 well pads in the licensed area. This is contradictory to what they've already said to the House of Commons Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee back in March this year where John Dewar said he was looking at around 19 well pads. I don't think for one moment a company with a track record of lying to local MPs would stick to this. It wouldn't make economic sense for them to not fully exploit the gas field by not placing the well pads close enough together. Gas doesn't flow in the tight geology of shale. This is why they have to hydraulically fracture or frack the boreholes. At the moment it's only possible to drill about two kilometres horizontally through the shale. This means to fully exploit the gas field they need to place well pads around four and a half kilometres apart. Here we can see what's happening underground. See how they need the well pads close enough together to fully exploit the gas. This would mean around 44 well pads in a grid across Rydale. As if the impact on the environment of having 44 well pads over 850 square kilometres wasn't bad enough, each well pad will have 10, 20, possibly up to 50 wells on it. This is because of the necessity to drill the horizontal drilling in different directions and also drilling at multiple depths due to the thickness of the shale. This means Rydale could be conservatively looking at nearly a thousand wells or potentially even up to 2,000 wells. We need to ask what are the consequences of so many fracking sites to the environment? It takes about three months for the 100 foot high drilling rig to drill the borehole. This is 24 hours, seven days a week. They are noisy of course. They are lit up like a Christmas tree at night. And 
If the drilling site at West Newton in East Yorkshire is a typical example, it will be very, very smelly. Sometimes when I visited the site, the smell was overpowering. Then, as soon as they've finished one borehole, they'll start the next. So the drilling stage itself could last a number of years on each well pad. What impact is this going to have to the people, wildlife and farming? We can say goodbye to bats, owls and other wildlife. They're soon gone. I don't know how the local farms will be affected by the noise, the light and the smell, but it can't be good for the livestock. We even need to consider the zoo animals at Flamingo Land. I'm sure the disruption is not going to be good for them. Anyone who's thinking of selling the home in the Rydell area better do so quickly. Wherever fracking has entered the area, house prices tumble. The government report on the impacts of fracking was, well, we don't know. The whole of the section about housing was redacted, so I'm guessing it wasn't good. Despite what others have said, there has only ever been one modern frack job done in the UK. It was done by a company called Quadrilla near Blackpool about four years ago. After a couple of small earthquakes, which the company later admitted was caused by the fracking, it was temporarily banned in the UK. The ban was then later lifted by the Conservative government and now we have what they call a dash for gas being pushed in the desolate north. The industry have a term for these areas. They call them the sacrifice zones. It's impractical to do fracking in rural areas in the UK. Take the road network for example. How many lorries will it take to service just one well pad? It takes on average around 5 million gallons of liquid to do a frack. This could be anywhere between 3 and 10 million, but on average 5 million. If there are 10 boreholes on one pad, that's 50 million gallons needed to service that one pad. This all has to be shipped in by lorry. One lorry can carry 44,000 gallons. So it would take 1,250 lorry trips just to service the water for one pad. That's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Earlier, I said we could be looking at around 1,000 wells in the Rydell area. That's tens of thousands of lorry movements and the small narrow country roads. How is that going to affect the poor people who live in the area? the tourist industry, the farmers. Obviously, these lorries won't all suddenly appear at once throughout the Rydale area. It will be phased in through the 30 or so years life of the gas fields. If you moved out to the country for a quiet life, you might want to think about moving somewhere else. One of the main problems with high volume, high pressure hydraulic fracturing is the poisoning of the environment. This is air pollution, water and ground pollution. It destroys the ecology. It causes illness and death. We have decades of experience in America and Australia. We know what happens, so why would they want to do that in the UK? All this for the sake of profit for a few people? According to the Energy Industry's own survey, done by a company called Slumberger. 5% of wells will fail immediately. A perfect example of this is the West Newton drilling site near Hull. It only lasted a few weeks during testing before it had to be abandoned. After 15 to 20 years, the failure rate rises to 50%. Using these statistics, we can predict that by 2035, there will be around 500 leaking gas wells in Rydale. Some of us may not be around then, but our children and our grandchildren will be. Is it fair to expect them to clean up the mess that we knew would happen, but went ahead anyway? That's if it even can be cleaned up. Some areas will become uninhabitable. It's happening right now in the Queensland region of Australia. 
People are becoming sick from the fumes and tainted water. They've been left to tend for themselves. We also need to ask, who is going to pay for the cleanup of the mess? Don't assume the energy company that has made billions will do it. It will be funded out of the taxpayers' money. Wherever the fracking industry has entered the area, it has divided the community. I've seen it myself in East Yorkshire. In North Yorkshire, we don't have the luxury of time to sort out these differences. The industry is beginning to move forward quickly and we must band together right now to stop it before it's too late. I don't have time in this short video to cover the details about the how and why things occur with the leaking wells etc. I've tried not to over exaggerate the consequences of what I think will happen in Rydale. I don't need to. The reality is bad enough. Please educate yourself, educate your friends, join together and let's make Rydale a frack-free zone.